I just finished preaching the gospel, um, which I'll post the video on my YouTube um, later, or either together with this one, or you know, it will be up there. Um, and it was actually a really good outreach. Um, while I was preaching, I had some kids messing around, um, you know, which can be quite off putting. Uh, but when I finished, obviously it was ignored them, um, but when I finished, they, um, you know, there was a couple of police officers that came over to me. Um, and usually, I mean, preaching in Israel is legal, but you know, it's never good. They just want you to shut up, basically. But the, the place here was completely different. They were like, are those children bother? Are those kids? They're only about 15, 16. They're like, are they bothering you? I'm like, oh, well, they're just being children, really. You know, they're like, no, no, they're bothering you. I said, well, I was on the mic preaching. They obviously heard me because they was walking up the road as I was doing it. They were like, well, you know, that's, I said, I've got to expect the persecution. You know, it comes with the job. And they went, well, that's not okay. It's not an excuse. You know, if they're bothering you, we can talk to them. I'm thinking, wow, oh my goodness. Like, this is such a blessing from God because usually they're like, you know, people don't want to hear it, but not here. Or at least not those police officers anyway. Um, so, but the reason I actually wanted to make this video is because Brighton is known for, um, it's basically known for being gay. Um, it's like the gay capital of England. Um, and we are living in today in a world that is totally accepting of this behavior. And when you call it out for what it is, which is sin, generally people turn on you and they call you, they call you evil. You know, you're the, you're the wicked one because you don't, you know, you're a, a bigot or whatever it is that they want to call you. Um, like human beings, like we're not gods and we don't get to make up the rules. And we don't get to say what is good and what is not. And the Bible actually tells us that woe to them who call evil good and good evil. Now, if you know something is a sin and you know that it's leading people to hell and you know that God has condemned this practice and you go and you endorse this practice as if it's acceptable in the sight of God, you are was wicked as the people committing sin. You really are. And this is why the Bible condemns you. You know, I the other day, I preached the gospel and there was a man and he came over to me, like he waited for me to finish, turn the camera off and we was talking and he told me that he was a Christian, that he backslid, um, that he believed in Jesus, but he got caught up in the world and he was gay. And he was going to a church where they was accepting of this behavior. In fact, he told me the pastor was gay. And I was like, first of all, many people call themselves Christian, you know? But that doesn't mean to say that they've been born again. And Jesus said, that unless a man be born of the spirit, he will never see the kingdom of God. You know, we're not saved by our works, we're saved by our faith in Jesus Christ. Um, but we are dead in sin and this is you know one of the reasons why we're drawn to our sinful behaviors and the loss of the flesh um, because of our sinful nature and when Jesus by faith in him saves us he makes us alive and he changes us and he gives us the Holy Spirit and he is then the one that enables us to walk in his ways and so there is always going to be a change in you, you know. I haven't got my testimony shared on my video. Uh, maybe sometime in the future I'll give it again. I have shared it before. 
it was on my previous channel that I had that I, I you know, I lost, I had to start again. Um, but I spent many years thinking that I was saved, that I was right with God, but I still lived like the rest of the world, you know? And I just believed, even though I believed Jesus died on the cross for my sin, I still believed that you just had to be a good person. You know, if you were good enough, God would let you into heaven. You see somebody like Hitler and you think that's going, he's going to hell. I'm not, you know? I don't look any different from anybody else in the world. So, you know, I'm not hurting anybody. But when he saved me, when he really saved me, he completely changed me. He completely changed my heart, my desires. I wanted God. I didn't want the things of this world. I wanted holy things. I wanted my Bible. I wanted to live for him. I wanted to obey him. You know, I started reading through my Bible, looking for all the things that I could do that would please him. You know, there was a transformation in me that took place. And it was a supernatural work of the spirit. And I obviously loved God, I believed in God, you know, but I wasn't saved. And yeah, I would have said to you I was, but I wasn't. And this is the same for, every, like, for many people today in the world. They believe themselves to be saved because they one time they pay, prayed a prayer or you know, somebody told them they were saved. Or they go to church and they think they're a good person. And they look at God and they forget that he's holy and righteous and just. And the Bible teaches that he's angry with the wicked every single day, you know? And sin is wickedness. Sin is transgression of the law. And God has called out this behavior, homosexuality, as sin. And when you have so-called Christians telling other so-called Christians that this practice is acceptable behavior, they're deceiving them. It is not acceptable behavior. It is sinful and it is, it is leading people to hell, you know? And yesterday, Pope Francis, uh, he came out and he said that um, anybody that criminalizes homosexuality is unjust. The devil is in that man or behind him. You know, it might look like he's coming out with something that is, you know, good, but it's not, it's evil. You know, he's just basically called God unjust. You know, and people, you know, devout Catholics, they will say, Pope ain't Catholic, you know, he's not like the other popes, he's not traditional, or whatever they want to say about him. Guess what? Neither are any of the others. The others aren't Christian. The others aren't saved. They're all the same. You know, they all sit in the same seat. They all practice the same faith. And they all tell you to practice the same things as well, which was an abomination to God. Um, you know, the Pope isn't saved. And he's not sitting in Peter's seat. And Jesus said, if you follow a blind guide, you will fall into the same pit. The Catholic Church is a false apostate church. They have a false gospel. They teach salvation by works, that you have to do things in order for you to get to heaven. This is not true. You are dead. Dead people can't work for salvation. That in order for you to get to heaven, you have to be born again. You know, you are dead in sin. Jesus makes you alive. This is by faith in him. When he makes you alive, he changes your heart. He's then enables you to walk in his ways. This is why James says, Faith without works is dead. The body without the spirit is also dead. When you have been saved by your faith, only by your faith, you start going through sanctification. The Holy Spirit changes you and the work of the spirit in our lives is to make us more like Jesus Christ. You know, and this is where we're at right now. Like, uh, well, if you're truly saved, this is where we are. But you know, we're, but the Pope, the Catholic Church, they teach a different gospel. They teach salvation by a faith plus works. You have to do things in order for you to receive the kingdom of God. This is not true. And not only that, but they elevate Mary, pray to dead. Deuteronomy 18.10 says um, that's forbidden practice. Um, and they do many other things. But you see, the Pope will quote um, Peter, uh, Matthew 
16, uh, Matthew 16 verses 15 through to 19. Jesus said to Peter, who do you say I am? And Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And he said, blessed are you, Simon by Jonah, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father who is in heaven has revealed this to you. And he said, now you are Peter, and he used the Greek word Petros, P-E-T-R-O-S, which means that it's translated as a stone. And he said, upon this Petra rock, I will build my church. Now, if you go to 1 Corinthians verses 10, uh, 1 Corinthians 10 verses 3, um, Peter said that Jesus was the spiritual rock that the Israelites drank out of. Now, if you go back to Exodus verses 17, 5, uh, 17, 5, you will see that God stood over Moses as Moses struck the rock and the water came out. And in John 7, 35, Jesus said that whoever believes in me, out of their hearts will flow rivers of living water. This he said about the Holy Spirit who had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet been glorified. Now, when you rightly divide the word of God, what this is telling us, that in order for us to receive that living water, the rock who is none other than Jesus Christ himself had to be struck. The Pope is deceived and he is deceiving others. And if you belong to that church, you have to come out of there. You've got to be loyal to God. You know, you can't practice these false religions and false apostate churches and fellowship with his enemies. This is just not okay. You know, the, I was Catholic. Uh, before I got saved, but as soon as I got saved, the Lord pulled me out of that. I knew, I knew God was not in that church. I knew, and that was without reading the Bible. I just knew, I went back there. It was the coldest place I'd ever been in. And yet I'd been in there so many times while I was still dead in my sin, and he didn't bother me. But the second he saved me, I, I could tell there was something seriously wrong with that place. And I didn't even read my Bible. It was only later that I kind of learned all the stuff that I know now. You know, the Pope is not sitting in PSC. Jesus is the rock. He's the spiritual rock the Israelites drank out of. He's the same rock that we drink out of. So, you know, and now he's he's basically disguising himself as an angel of light by claiming that, you know, you're unjust if you call homosexuality a sin. Um, no, this is what God says in his word. And we live in a world today where it's not acceptable to stand on the truth of God's word. They call you evil for standing on the truth of it. We have to, stand firm in our faith we have to fight for the truth because it will save people from hell you know this man i told him your behavior is sinful you know you put your trust in jesus christ for the forgiveness of sin he saved you when he saved you you have to depart from iniquity but that love that you're seeking in those people jesus himself can give it to you and it ain't worth an eternity in hell you know and these people that endorse this stuff and they tell you these things they are wicked and they are deceiving you. And I would stay far away from that church and I would find a good Bible teaching church that is gonna hold you accountable to your sin so that you can follow Jesus in the right way. You know, sin is not okay, it's just not. You know, God saves us by his grace through faith in Jesus Christ, not of our work selves, not of work. When he saves you, he changes your heart, he sanctifies you. We begin the sanctification process. There is going to be work that is going to be through. Okay, so to continue to live in the same way as you did before, I challenge you to examine yourself and see if you really are in the faith. Because I know that I was deceived for a long time thinking I was saved and I was um, And I see that happening today with people that go to church thinking they're saved and they're not. So anyway, I just wanted to share this because it really is wicked practice that, you know, endorsing this stuff and, it, you know, the enemy is behind it with Pope Francis. Um, because people listen to him, they, they, they just, they revere him as somebody and he's nobody. He ain't nobody. He's not working for God. He doesn't speak for God. He's not the vicar of Christ and he's not sitting in Peter's seat. But they revere him and this is bad, very bad. The enemy is the God of this world. Jesus said, what does it profit a man that if he gains the whole world and lose his own soul? You know, that man gained the whole world and lost his soul. The, the devil said, the kingdoms of the world have been given to me. I can give them to whoever I want. You don't want the kingdoms of this world. We don't set our minds on the things of this world. We set our minds on the things that are above. And we live for Christ.
no longer I who live but he that lives in me anyway um, God bless you I wanted to share this video with you and talk about these things because it's really important um, and yeah I'll see you soon God bless you bye